right, so now on to uh, discuss some things about paths. Okay, so uh, what do I mean by that? So uh, let X be a uh, topological space. Uh, <coughs> so uh, and uh, A and B are going to be points in X. Um, so uh, we might have this kind of picture here. Is X, maybe it's got a hole in it here, and uh, got some points. Uh, here's our point A, here's our point B, and uh, so uh, a uh, path from A to B in X means a continuous map. Say u from the unit interval uh, to x uh, with u0 is a, u1 is b. And uh, a kind of typical picture of that you know, is just like a path from a to b uh, staying within the space x. <clears throat> and so yeah, but, yeah, u, this was u0. This one was u1, and some point around here might be u of 0 0.5. So uh, that's what we mean by a path. And uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. and so as I said, this is a path going to be a, a map out of the unit interval 0, 1. Um, Uh, sometimes you want to identify the zero one with uh, the uh, with the, the simplex delta one. And delta one, remember, is uh, uh, so uh, delta one is by definition the uh, well, it's. it's uh, uh, pairs of x0, x1, where x0 and x1 are non-negative, and x0 plus x1 is going to be equal to 1. Uh, but that means that x0, x1 has the form 1 minus tt for some uh, t in the unit interval, and you know, we're going to identify this with t. Um, <clears throat> So that means that the one end of the, uh, the zero end becomes this uh, uh, pair one comma zero, which we call E naught, and one becomes zero one, uh, which we call E one. So uh, sometimes it's going to be more convenient to do, think in terms of the one simplex, but or sometimes just in terms of the unit interval. So that's what we mean by a path. <coughs> yeah. uh, <coughs> And uh, then we're going to do, introduce a certain relation on, on the space. Um, we're going to write a twiddle b if there exists a path. Um, uh, from a to b and x. Um, <clears throat> And we'll also write uh, this kind of uh, squiggly arrow uh, so that squiggly arrow indicates that u is a path from A to B. And so uh, yeah, um, so you know, if you had a, a space that consists of uh, two parts like this, uh, then you, know, you might have A and B here, and uh, C here. Then, uh, uh, then it would work out that uh, uh, A twiddle B, but uh, A can't be connected to to C within this space uh, because you know, A and B are in this left-hand part and C is in the right-hand part. Okay. 
So we're going to want to prove that this is actually an equivalence relation, and for, uh, to prove this is an equivalence relation, we're going to need some uh, constructions with paths. So uh, one very basic one um, is just the constant path. Uh, Okay, so we've got this uh, constant path which goes uh, um, so we make it uh, in this notation that we mentioned a second ago, and that's obviously a path from A to itself. Uh, then there's a couple more uh, constructions like this, so we just need to open the ball. Okay, so the next thing is uh, just path reversal. So, uh, um, yeah, so we just define u bar of t to be u of 1 minus t, so as t goes from 0 to 1, then uh, uh, 1 minus t goes from 1 back down to 0. Uh, <clears throat> so if u is a path from a to b, then obviously uh, v, u bar is a path from b to a, right? because u bar of 0 is u of 1, which is b, and uh, u bar of 1 is u of 0, which is a. <clears throat> now here's something a little bit more subtle. So suppose we've got a path U which goes from A to B and a path V which goes from B to C. So it could be like this, so here's our A, here's our B, here's our C, and uh, we've got a path U which goes like this, and path V which goes like this, and obviously visually you could just join them, join them together to get a path which goes from A to C. <clears throat> so what's the actual the sort of proper mathematical formulation of that? We're going to define uh, U star V function from zero on to X. Um, so U star V T. So it's going to be U of two T. Uh, if T is between zero and a half. And uh, v of 2t minus 1 um, <clears throat> um, So uh, there's a potential problem with this definition that you know, we've got these two different clauses and they're both in operation when t is a half. So we need to check what happens when t is a half. Uh, Well, and t is a half in the first clause gives u of 1, but uh, u is a path from a to b, so u of 1 is just b. And second clause gives a uh, v of twice, uh, twice a half minus 1, or v of 0, 
uh, but second order can v, v of zero, but you know, V is path from uh, V to C, so V of zero is P. So, uh, the, um, so the two clauses are consistent when they're both uh, both operational. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> And the other thing we need to note is that this is actually a continuous map. Uh, so why is that? That's kind of by this closed patching lemma. Okay, so we've got the <coughs> We can divide the unit interval up into the left half and the right hand half. These are both closed sets. And it's kind of clear that uh, you know, on, the, on, on this first set, the zero half, this first clause is operational. So this is just the composite of U with the map sending T to 2T. So that's going to be a continuous map. And then on this other thing, uh, you know, it's just the comp composite of the continuous map V with the map sending T to 2T minus 1. So that's also continuous. So the function is continuous on both of those two closed sets, and the two closed sets cover the unit interval. Uh, so by this closed patching lemma, uh, we see that we've got a continuous map. Um, and, uh, and then u star v of 0, well, that's, uh, you know, if uh, t is 0, the first clause is operational, you just get u of 0. And uh, whereas u star v of 1, okay, so if a t is 1, then the second clause is operational, you get uh, v of tw uh, 2 times 1 minus 1, which is v of 1, which is c. Um, so we're seeing that we've actually we've got a path from a to c. That's just... Uh, mathematical formulation of this picture that we drew here. So then we need to uh, explain what exactly we're going to do with these path operations. Well, I'll just clean the board again. So an immediate corollary is that uh, this uh, relation that we introduced is an equivalence relation. Remember what that means? It means it's a reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> um. Okay, so we need to show that A is related to A according to this relation, and the relation, uh, the definition of the relation is that A is related to B if there exists a path from A to B, and uh, the constant path goes from A to A, uh, so, uh, so that, that does it. Um. Um. <clears throat> So uh, now we need to prove symmetry, right? Suppose that A, A is related to B, we need to show that B is related to A. But what does it mean to say A is related to B? It means that there's a path from A to B. Um, <clears throat> uh, but then U bar was a path from B to A. Uh, so uh, B is related to A. So that proves that the uh, relation is symmetric. And similarly, transitivity. So I suppose A is related to B and B is related to C. Uh, 
to say that A is related to B means there exists a path U from A to B, and to say B is related to C means there exists a path V from B to C. Um, then uh, this uh, joined path U star V, that's path from A to C. So we see that A is related to C. A is related to C. Okay. So this proves that we've got an equivalence relation. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we put square bracket A is the equivalence class of A, which is the set of all x such that A twiddle x. Um, So in other words, that's just a set of all points that can be reached by a path from A. Um, and uh, <coughs> the, the name that's used for that, that's the connected component of A. <coughs> okay, so if we had a, had a space like this, A space like this, you know, and then maybe some points here, um, A1 and A2, and point B1, B2 there, and then uh, point C3 in this middle part here, uh, or sort of, sort of call that C1, another point C2, uh, then uh, <clears throat> in this picture what we're seeing is that uh, a1 is related to A2, and if we call this left-hand part, you know, call this guy A, and then this sort of outer region here we call B, and then this inner region here we call C, uh, then uh, we see that uh, A1 and A2 are related, and square bracket A1 is the same as square bracket A2, which is the whole of this set A, and uh, And square bracket B1 equals square bracket B2 is B, and uh, square bracket C1 is square bracket C2 is capital C. <coughs> and then uh, you know, we also find uh, um, pi 0x is x mod twiddle, it's the set of all equivalents. So in this particular, um, so for the, this particular picture here, uh, we conclude that uh, pi zero x is the set of three elements. So each of these sets, capital A, capital B, capital C, and they, 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 each one of those sets is by itself a single element of pi zero x. So pi zero x just has size three. It's just consists consists of these three points. Uh, and yeah, so that's uh, that's a, that's the set pi zero.